Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to Vulture Festival and welcome to the Winkler Method. Uh, my name is Jen Cheney. I'm a critic for Vulture, and I'm going to be asking Henry a few questions to start off, and then we're going to get right into watching some actors do some scenes and getting some uh, important coaching from Henry. <laughs> so um, to start off, I wanted to ask you, uh, I recently saw your work in the French Dispatch, and I know that as an actor, you have to be prepared to work with different kinds of filmmakers. Can you just talk a little bit about what it was like working with Wes Anderson? You get a call. You get a call from Wes. You leave whatever you're doing. You get on a plane. You fly for nine hours. You get on a train. You go for three hours. You get off in a small town in the center of France. You stand for three hours. You're fitted for costumes. You show up the next day. There are no trailers. Uh, there is no green room. There is a room made out of velour curtains uh, that are <laughs> clamped to, uh, to pipes. Uh, Benicio del Toro says, I don't know why I had to come so early. I, I'm not being used, but for what? Wes, I stay here. Okay. <laughs> and then you learn the language of Wes. I turn to Bob Balaban. Uh, have you seen it yet? Uh, the French Dispatch? If you haven't, that's your homework. Uh, I turn to Bob Balaban, who plays my brother. I said, I have a thought for Wes. Should I tell him? Bob whipped his head around and said, no. <laughs> I was quiet for the rest of the 12 days. <laughs> was it fun? I am honored. Yeah, great. And I do, I want to ask you, I'm sure a lot of people here watch Barry, yes. a show on which you play uh, someone who helps actors, or, or at least is supposed to be helping them. Um, you guys started shooting again, I think, in August, right? Yes. Um, what was it like to go back to the set after this long break? Everybody knows the feeling of being locked down and then uh, getting a chance to get up and leave and, and be in some way productive. We are finishing on Friday, this coming Friday, oh, wow. the third season. Uh, it will be on, I was told, maybe March. We will start the fourth season, maybe September. It is, I, I'm going to tell you, this is the, the, not hyperbole, this is the most dramatic moment of my entire career that started on June 30th, 1970. Wow. Can you, why do you say that? Can you tell us? If I tell you, I will be dead. Okay. <laughs> well, we don't want that. No. We don't want that. Uh, one last question for you, and then we're going to get right into doing the scenes. Um, what advice, I'm sure you get this question a lot, but what advice do you give to an actor who's just starting out? So I started my career June 30th, 1970, and this is what I have learned. You are not hired to fill time and space. You are hired for your imagination to fill that time and space. If you do not want to do this job, if you are not burning inside to be an artist, to be an actor, an actress, uh, um, or whatever it is, then go and do something else because it is so difficult. It is the waiting is difficult, the rejection is difficult. I would get an extra pillow and then I would, uh, when you are not hired and you go, but I was so good in that audition, I would beat the shit out of my bed <laughs> and empty all of the anger so that the next time you go in, you are an empty vessel only for that particular part. And fear. I am scared all the time. I audition. I sit in those metal chairs around the wall waiting to be called. Young actors say, you're Henry Winkler. What are you doing here? I'm going to look for a job, you. <laughs> because it never ends. It never ends. And you leave your fear in the chair. When you go in, what is it? There's no right, there's no wrong. You have a 50-50 shot. Go for the gold. I went in on my first audition in Hollywood in 1973 for a brand new show. I'm a short Jew from New York, and I walked in and I changed my voice. I don't know how that happened, but I did. <laughs> and it unlocked me, and I just did whatever I wanted to do. And they said, hey, that's not what we wrote. And I said, hey. I'm giving you the essence of the character. <laughs> if I learn it, I will do it verbatim because I cannot read off the page. I'm dyslexic. 
So you make it up. You go for the gold. Wow. All right. So with that, we're already inspired. So let's get more inspired. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to call different actors up. Some of them are going to do monologues. Some of them are going to do scenes. Uh, and I want everybody to know that we're doing this safely. Everybody who's coming up has been COVID tested. Um, so we're all good. So I'll call our first person, Christy Morales. Can you come up? Hi. Hi. You have a monologue? I have a monologue. Okay. It's from Bridesmaids. From Bridesmaids? Yeah, just no pressure. No. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Motherfucking Paris? I told you she wanted to go to Paris. I told you Paris. I told you. What, you're, you're going to go to Paris with Helen now? Are you going to ride around on bikes with berets and a fucking baguette in the basket in the front of your bike? I mean, I mean what, what kind of woman buys another woman a trip to Paris? Lillian, this is not the you that I know. The you that I know would have walked in here and rolled her eyes and thought how completely over the top and ridiculous this is. Look at this shower. Look at that fucking cookie. Did you really think that this group of women were gonna finish that entire cookie? <laughs> hey, you know what? Maybe it's better if you dip it in the fucking chocolate. <sighs> you know what? That was great. You don't need any more than that. That's a great end. So here it is. Is it all right? I, uh, I'm just going to say what is on my mind, and if I hurt your feelings, raise your hand. Okay? I'm used to rejection. <laughs> okay. I'm not rejecting you. I think you have unbelievably great understanding um, uh, for stunt. You have great uh, knowledge of what you're saying. I don't think you are feeling what you're saying. I don't think you mean what you're saying. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to my best friend. You're talking to your best friend. And why are you so pissed off? Because she's going to go to Paris with a new, a new friend who's replacing me. And, and sh you thought she should take you? Yeah. And how does that make you feel? Super upset. Okay, let me know that. Okay. Start from the beginning? Uh, from the beginning. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Motherfucking Paris? I told you she wanted to go to Paris. I told you Paris. I told you. Okay, stop. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to Helen. No, I, you're not talking to anybody. Could, would you do me a favor? Would you just stand up and stand here? What is her name? Helen. Helen, you're Helen. Just look her right in the eye. Okay, right there. Do not smile. Okay. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? Motherfucking Paris? I told you she wanted to go to Paris. I told you Paris. It was I your idea, you. right? Yeah. Okay, tell her. I told you pa she wanted to go to Paris. I told you Paris. I told you. You can keep going. Well, now I need... The paper? No, uh, my friend. No, it's okay. Okay. Okay, just, just start again from the beginning. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry, just a question. So I'm talking to two people. Okay, fine. Yeah? She's sitting down now at the table. There we go. All right? She, she's had too much wine. <laughs> Thank you. She's enjoying her bisque. <laughs> okay. Are you fucking kidding me? Motherfucking Paris? Wait a minute. Do you mean that? Are you fucking kidding me? Fucking Paris? Whose idea was it? Whose idea was it? It's my idea. Whose idea it was, was it? my idea. Tell her it's your idea. It was, I told you she wanted to go to Paris. I told you Paris. I told you. You're gonna go to Paris with Lillian now? What are you gonna, you're gonna ride around in bikes with a beret and a fucking baguette in your bicycle? How romantic. What woman gives another woman a trip to Paris? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your soup. Can I ask you a question? How do you feel? Okay, do you think 
that you moved just an inch to another place? Yeah. You do? Wow. That was great. That was great. All right. Great job, Christy. Our next person is Danielle Smith. Can I ask you a question? Am I, like, breaking a rule by touching another person? I don't know. If, I don't think so. Is, am I going to be taken to court? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. I'm just so sorry that your shoes aren't higher. <laughs> Come here, sweetheart. What is your name? I'm Danielle. Danielle? Yes. How do you feel? I'm super nervous. Okay. You got to let it go. Uh, this is from Antoine Fisher. Why'd you never come for me? Didn't you ever wonder where I was? or what I was doing, or what I had become, or even if I was still alive? Didn't you? I've taken care of myself. I have. I have. I've never been in any trouble with the law. I've read hundreds of books. I've written poems, I've painted pictures, I've traveled the world, I've served my country. I know two languages and I'm working on a third. Okay, that's good. I mean, that, that was really good. Okay, just from the beginning to where you just did it, you just read the words from a monologue. Now I need you to fill those words. Who are you talking to? Oh, well, shit, I'm talking to the mother that bounced early. Okay, so you were abandoned, right? Yes. Okay, and you've now, you've worked up to yes. being able to confront her or she's not there? No, this is, a, this is a confrontation. This is a confront. This mm -hmm. is a confrontation. It is. Long You're time telling coming. her what she's missed, not I learned a language. Let's see that. Why'd you never come for me? Didn't you ever wonder? where I was, what I was doing, what I've become, or even if I was still alive, didn't you? I've taken care of myself, I have. Okay, now, tell me, this is who I am. I took care of myself, I didn't need you. I tried to figure it out, I could, and I figured it out all by myself. I didn't need fucking you. So tell me. I've taken care of myself, I have. I have. Why am I forgetting? It doesn't One more matter, time. it doesn't matter. I've taken care of myself, I have. I've never been in any trouble with the law, ever. I've written hundreds of books, woo. I literally have written poems. Yeah. I have painted pictures. I have traveled the entire world. Yeah. I serve my country. I know two languages. I'm working on a fucking third. Thank you. Where you were going is where you have to get. Do you understand? Where you were going, that's the monologue. Not, oh well, I learned two languages and you know, I didn't need you and you are filled to the brim.
expecting to cry during this panel, but the day is full of surprises. All right. Next, we're going to have a scene with two actors, Christina M Muller and Katherine Lerner. Hi. I'm so happy to see you both. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi. Just introduce yourselves. What is your name? Hi, I'm Catherine. Catherine. Christina. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> where? Just where is the the scene from? Girl oh, boss. Okay. Hello, welcome to Lush. We have a great selection of- Oh, I really gotta go. It's just work, work, work around here. Was that a personal call? It was. And are you surfing the web right now? I am. You know that's against company policy. I do. I do not know where to begin. <laughs> so if you want to just get your thoughts in order, we can just put up. You're always this. late. You're glib. You're constantly surfing the web. Oh my you God, please stop saying surfing the web. Hey, How old are you? I happen to enjoy that phrase, and it perfectly describes what you're doing on your cell phone. You are paid to sell shoes, not to have Sophia time. And is that my sandwich? I didn't know it's yours. What do you think the C stands for? Chicken. It's. A tuna sandwich. Okay, so they get the labels wrong. I mean, people make mistakes, Carol. It's fine. Jesus. I just got my period. Okay. <laughs> Great place to stop. All right. It's a comedy, but it's based in reality. Right. Do not think you're funny. You are funny. You have a real situation here. Play the drama, and if it's written well, the comedy will be there. Right. Okay? All right. Uh, did you ever in your life ever say, I enjoy the phrase? I like the phrase. Yeah. I, I say, I like it. Right? Okay. All right. Really? Hi. Welcome to Lush. We have a great selection of different Oh, shoes. I really got to go. It's just work, work, work around here. Was that a personal call? It was. And are you surfing the web right now? I am. You know that's against company policy. I do. Okay. I do not know where to begin. So if you just want to get your thoughts in order, we can just put a pin in this you and do it later. You are always late. You're glib. You're constantly surfing the web. Oh my gosh, you please stop saying surfing the web. What? How old are you? I, I like that phrase. And it perfectly describes what you're doing on your cell phone. You are paid to sell shoes, not to have Sophie. Is that my sandwich? I didn't know it was yours. What do you think the C stands for? Chicken. It's a tuna sandwich. Okay, so they got the labels wrong. Carol, they make mistakes all the time. It's fine. Jesus. I just got my period. Okay. Now, let me say, I heard two things that you said that I didn't hear before because your added, um, uh, your added attitude blocked the words. Okay. That was wonderful. All of a sudden, there was a conversation. The rhythm, I thought, was terrific. Did you? Yeah. Did you enjoy <laughs> I did. it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. And when you said, excuse me for a minute, I, I never heard you say we're here to sell shoes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, I, it just it was really lovely that you just talk to each other. And as you talk to each other in rehearsal, the comedy will come. You don't have to make the comedy. You are a funny person. You are a, you've got great rhythm. Cool. Okay? Awesome. That whole chicken run and they make mistakes was just great, I thought. Awesome. Okay? <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Christina. Thanks, Catherine. Really? Uh, that was lovely. Stay healthy. <laughs> Our next actor is Shay Ali. Uh, 
uh, this is from a play called uh, Where You Can't Follow. Hold it. You're standing at the edge of this thing. Oh, I was going to then come up. Uh, it's from a play called Where You Can't Follow uh, from Adam Simkowitz. I guess I haven't done as well as I wanted in life. My time is ending. And I didn't mean to be an asshole. It just sort of happened. But I don't want to die an asshole. So I want to apologize. I'm sorry for living such a stupid, useless, wasteful life. And I'm sorry for being selfish and for not seeing the good in people around me. And I'm sorry for not recognizing the good things and appreciating the good things around me. And I'm sorry for not going after what I wanted. And there's no good reasons. I was just afraid. And it's stupid to live your life afraid. I'm sorry for the times that I was mean and petty. I lived a wasted life. Okay. Pretty good. I think that you uh, cut your emotionality in half by moving so much because people are watching you and they're not, all of a sudden, they're only half listening. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to try something. I'm going to ask you to stand very still but turn your back to the audience. And I'm going to ask you to talk to them and not move. Now I want you to tell them what you are feeling, what you are thinking. Are you dying right now? You are? What are you dying of? Do you know? Cancer. You're dying of cancer. So this has come to you. This has just come to you, right? Mm -hmm. These thoughts. Okay. If you need your paper, take your paper. That's fine. Do not move and tell everybody behind you what you are feeling. I wasted my life by not really being alive. Why live a life where you're so afraid of living? He made me really live. And I should have told him much sooner. Of course I should have. It was cowardly. It was selfish. I just wanted him. And I didn't think that he felt the way I felt. But I guess he did, didn't he? And now it's too late. It's too late. Okay. Hold it. Don't move. Now you know the words. I don't know how you really feel. It's too late. How does that make you feel? Oh my God, if I only knew this two months ago, two years ago. I need you to fill up what you're saying, not just say it. All right, talk to them. Tell them what you want them to know. I guess I haven't done as well as I wanted in life. My time is ending. And I didn't mean to be an asshole. It just sort of happened. But I don't want to die an asshole. So I want to you apologize. Know what? That line, th th those are, that's, that's, I didn't mean to be an asshole. It just happened. But man, I don't want to die an asshole. You are desperate now. You've got like hours to fucking live. I want you to fill up that line. Just do that line. Tell them. I didn't mean to be an asshole. 
it, it just sort of happened. But I don't want to die an asshole. Okay. I, I, to my ear, that was so th much thicker than, the, than what you had done before. Yeah, didn't it? Yeah, it felt that way? That's great. I'm so happy it did. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Shay. Our next actor is Roxy Shabastari. Hello. Hi. Uh, this is from A Raisin in the Sun. Oh, wow. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Me. Uh, I'm nothing. Me. <laughs> Me. Uh, uh, okay. When I was very small, uh, we used to take our sleds out in the wintertime, and the only hills we had were these ice-covered stone steps of some houses down the street. And we used to fill them in with snow and make them smooth and slide down them. And it was <laughs> very dangerous, you know? It's like far too steep. And sure enough, one day, a kid named Rufus came down too fast and hit the sidewalk. And we watched his face just split open right in front of us. And I remember standing there looking at his bloody open face, just thinking, well, that was the end of Rufus. But the ambulance came, and they took him to the hospital, and they fixed the broken bones, and they sewed him all up. And the next time I saw Rufus, he just had a little line down the middle of his face. I never got over that, that that was what one person could do for another. You know, like, sew him up, fix the problem, make him all right again. was the most marvelous thing in the world. I wanted to do that. I always thought it was the one concrete thing that a human being could do. I fix the sick, and make them whole again. That this was truly being God. Wow. Thanks. Wow. Thanks. That was lovely. How old are you? In the, not in real life. I would never, <laughs> I would never ask a lady. How old, how old are you? No. Um, how old are you in this? Um, I am in my 20s. You're in your 20s. Now, you start being seven, and then you talk about yourself being seven. And so I get lost. You don't have to pretend you're seven. You are who you are. And I want you then, so I want you to start again, but uh, who you are. And I, w this is where you're going. You're telling the story because it leads you to a revelation. Once you say, I want to do that, you need to connect the rest of the monologue to the fact that I want to do that, and everything you say after supports your dream. Somehow it got disconnected. They just became words. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. That's just. <laughs> Me? <laughs> Me? <I'm> nothing. <laughs> Me. Um. When I was very small, we used to take our sleds out in the wintertime, and the only hills we had were the ice-covered stone steps of some houses down the street, and we used to fill them in with snow and make them smooth and slide down them all day, and it was very dangerous, you know, <laughs> far too steep. And sure enough, one day, a kid named Rufus came down too fast and hit the sidewalk, and we watched his face just split open right in front of us. And I remember standing there, staring at his bloody open face, just thinking, well, that was the end of Rufus. 
But the ambulance came and they took him to the hospital and they fixed the broken bones and they sewed him all up. And the next time that I saw Rufus, he just had a little line down the middle of his face. <laughs> I never got over that. That that was what one person could do f for another. You know, sew him up, and fix the problem, make him all right again. <laughs> that was the most marvelous thing in the world. I wanted to do that. I always thought it was the one concrete thing that a human being could do. You know, fix the sick and make them whole again. That this was truly being God. Wow. Wow. Do you feel the difference? Yes. It felt way more connected. Did you see the difference? Yeah, I mean, it was really um, revelatory because all of a sudden, you all on your own just went deeper and deeper and deeper into this thing. I saw the steps, I, it was great. And you were you telling the story about y a past you, not pretending. Oh, Felt wow. that, thank yeah. you. It was really good. What is your first name? Roxy. 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 Great. Great. Thank you so much. Wow. I, w I just want to say, uh, we, we have, is this like we've been for 27 it's minutes? It's coming down backwards. Or we have only 27 minutes left? We have 27 minutes. Oh my God. So we only have 27 minutes left, but look how much we accomplished with such talented human beings. I mean, this is, a, oh, I'm so happy to be here to witness this. Okay, who's next? Okay, next we're gonna have a scene. So, so we have two damn actors. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. Uh, Ashley Ward and Bridget Boyle. Hi. Just tell us who you are. I'm Ashley. And I'm Bridget. Wonderful. And we're doing a scene from Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar. <laughs> Barb, what if Jennifer Convertible's closing was a sign? A sign? You know those times when you see me just staring at the carpet? Yes. Sometimes I daydream about life outside this place. Maybe something's telling us we should do something different. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Should we try those socks with the individual toes? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how my toes will react. They've always been together. Oh. I think they'll like it. Maybe something bigger. Like what? Like this. A trip star. No, look. Look at these two people. Imagine that's you and me riding that banana boat. Just bounce it around with our arms and legs spread open. <laughs> that's dangerous, Star. I mean, things happen to people on trips. What if we get lost or poisoned? I mean, what if we get a rash? What if they throw us in jail because they think we put drugs up our butt? What if we fall out of a car? Star, have you heard of traveler's diarrhea? <sighs> Haven't you ever wondered if the real ocean sounds like our noise machine? Star, the real ocean has currents and people get swept away and they scream and they sink and then they die. Okay, I know things changed for you after Ron died. I mean, they sure did after Carmine left me, but we used to have fun. Remember that one time we went to the haunted hayride? <laughs> yes, and that <laughs> man with the jack lantern head chased us with a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> and then we found out later that he wasn't an actor. Yeah. He just escaped from yeah. a local prison. Yeah. He was a real killer. <laughs> he, was he was trying to kill us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, great, great. Okay. So you both are funny people. You both have good timing. But you're not talking to each other. You're saying the lines knowing that they're funny. I need now just to try doing the drama. You are a different human being. You are ready to go. You are afraid of diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be caught with, oh my god, so you need to convince and you need to wait a minute. 
put on your jets here. Okay. Barb, what if Jennifer Convertible's closing was a sign? A sign? You know those days you see me just staring at the carpet? Yes. Sometimes I daydream about life outside this place. Maybe something's telling us to do something different. Oh my gosh, yes, yes. Yes? Oh. Yeah. Should we, should we try those socks with the individual toes? Y yeah. <laughs> I wonder how my toes will react because they've always been together. I think they'll like it. What if it's something bigger? Like what? Okay, she just suggested wearing socks. <laughs> You're, no, I don't think so. Yeah. How about something like a little? Okay. I don't hear that. Okay. Okay, you think it's a great idea. Hey, that's uh, pushing the envelope. Yeah. And do you wonder? I don't know that you wonder. Okay. Okay, here we go. From the socks? Yeah, from the okay. top. And also, oh, top. just think about this. You know all those times I stare? What are you doing when you're staring? Daydreaming. You're daydreaming. I don't get that. Y okay. I hear you just, hey, no, when I'm staring at the carpet. I don't know what you're doing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Barb, what if Jennifer Convertible's closing was a sign? A sign? You know those days when I just stare at the carpet? Yes. Sometimes I daydream about life outside this place. Maybe something's telling us to do something different. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> should, should we try those socks with the individual toes? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how my toes will react because they've always been together. I think they'll like it. What if it's something bigger? Like what? Like this. A trip star. No, look, look at these two people. Imagine that's you and me riding that banana boat, just bouncing around with our arms and legs spread open. No, that's dangerous, Star. I mean, things happen to people on trips. Okay, hold it. You're loving it. How are you feeling about it? Scared. Yeah, I don't hear that. Okay. Okay, so where, what are you gonna do, a trip? Yeah. Well, go ahead. No, look, look at these pe two people. Imagine that's you and me riding that banana boat, <laughs> just bouncing around with our arms and legs spread open. And that's, that's dangerous, Star. I mean, things happen to people no, on trips. No, you're scared. You're just saying the words. You, imagine yourself on that, uh, on that boat. You're on that boat. Your legs are spread apart. Okay? Yeah. Do you have on a, uh, an inner tube? No. Do you have a vest? No. Okay, to ask her again. <laughs> Imagine it's you and me just on that banana boat, just bouncing around with our arms and legs spread open. That's dangerous, Star. <laughs> Things happen to people on trips. I mean, what if we get lost or poisoned? What if we get a rash? What if they put us in jail because they think we put drugs up our butt? Okay, hold it. You're now building. You're building. What? Okay, all these things can happen. Really tell her because in your mind you see them all. Okay. Okay, tell her again. Start. Things happen to people on trips. What if we get lost or, or poisoned? What if we get a rash? What if they put us in jail because they think we put drugs up our butt? What if we fall out of a car? Okay, hold it. What happens if they find out that you put drugs up your butt? They put us in jail. And what will happen in, we'll in jail? We'll die in jail. Will you be raped in jail? Yeah. Will they just like not feed you in jail? They don't feed you and they, and they rape you and then you die. Tell her. <laughs> what, if, what if they put us in jail because they think we put drugs up our butt? What if we fall out of a car? Star, have you heard no, of traveling? That's diarrhea? another thought. What if they what if they put us in jail because they got drugs up our butt? Oh my god, we could fucking fall out of a car. Oh my god, no, that's even worse. Build your okay, tell her again about the boat. Okay. <clears throat> Imagine that's you and me riding that banana boat. Just bouncing around with our arms and legs spread open. That's dangerous, Star. I mean things happen to people on trips. What if we get lost or poisoned? What if we get a rash? What if they put us in jail because they think we put drugs up our butt? What if we fall out of a car? I start, have you heard of traveler's diarrhea? How Wait, can I ask you a question? What happens when you get a rash? Do you get a rash? Yeah. And what happens? What, do you put something on it? Do you put a cream on if it? If you have it. Okay, my God. Well, what happens? How does it feel? It hurts and it itches. So tell her that. What if we get a rash, Star? What, what if, we, what if we, they put us in jail because we get, they think we put drugs up our butt? What if we fall out of a car? Star, have you heard of traveler's diarrhea? 
Haven't you ever wondered if the real ocean sounds like our noise machine? Star, the real ocean has strong currents. People get swept up and they scream and they sink and they die. Okay. <laughs> How do you feel? Good. Good. How do you feel? Good. Yeah. Thank you. I'd like to be on that boat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you, ladies. Our next actor is Anna Brunghart. Brunghart? Am I saying that right? Brungard. Brungard. Okay. Sorry about that. How are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, what do you do in your real life? In my real life, yeah. I am a PhD student at UCLA in the European Languages and Transcultural Studies Department. Yes, you are. Yes, I am. Now, I <laughs> just want to tell you, um, Anna, uh, I know Anna, uh, and Anna is helping me because my short German Jewish parents uh, immigrated from Germany in 1939, and I have a box of papers, and Anna, I called UCLA, the dean of the, of the school, and he said, oh, Anna can do this, and so Anna has translated and organized those papers and said, oh, I'm also an actress, I'd like to do this. I don't know what you're gonna do, but I just wanted to tell you that uh, we have a uh, bridge. <laughs> A beautiful bridge. Um, so I'll be doing a scene or a monologue from Mayor of Easton. <coughs> um, well, it was a Sunday, and um, a neighbor had called and said that they'd seen Kevin go around the back of the house. Um, he was had been living with us on and off for a while at this point, so the neighbors kind of knew to call if they noticed him around, you know, because um, we put the word out because he'd, uh, he'd stolen a bunch of stuff from us before, so, you know. I'm just going to stop you for a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be great for the camera. Okay. In the theater, your job is to, you see that kind of camera on the, on the back there, the white thing? Maybe it's a light. Yeah. Your, your job is to reach that with your energy. Okay. You have a microphone. I'm over here. I'm not understanding all the wonderful words you're saying. Okay. Okay, here you go. Um, it was a Sunday. Um, a neighbor had called and said that they'd seen Kevin go around the back of the house. Um, he was, he, he had been living with us on and off for a while at this point. So, you know, neighbors kind of knew to call if they noticed him. Um, Cause we put the word out, he'd stolen a bunch of stuff from us before. So, so yeah, I just thought he was there for drug money like he always was. Um, Frank wasn't home that day. He'd, uh, he'd taken Drew to swim lessons, and I knew that Siobhan was right around the corner at her friend's house, so instead of going home myself, I, I asked her to check on him for me. Yeah. I was out, um, running errands, and then Siobhan, Siobhan called me and she, she was, hyster she was hysterical, she, she couldn't speak, she just would make these sounds, I don't remember even getting home, and I found him in the attic. He was one of the ceiling beams. Um, he'd gotten a, a tow rope from the garage and 
I cut him down and I I tried to ca- I tried to catch him, but he was heavy. He was he was heavy. He was heavy. And then I just cradled him in my arms t- until the paramedics came and and they had to pull him away from me. Yeah. Good. Good. So you really understand what you're saying, which is terrific. You have to think about taking the breath that you use for dramatic purposes and be strategic with it. Because every time you, you're making a space which leaves us a space for our minds to wander. Also, your pauses have to be strategic because every time you pause, you let us wonder about what you're going to say instead of listening to what you're going to say next. Okay. I want you, who are you talking to? I'm talking to my therapist. You're talking to your therapist? Yeah. Okay. Can, can this person be your therapist? Oh, yeah. Okay. Talk to this person, but I want you to tell this person the story. Okay. And every time I think you're not telling the story, I'm going to stop you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> it was a Sunday. Um, a neighbor called and said that they'd seen Kevin go around the back of the house. Uh, he'd been... a living with us on and off for a while at this point, so we had to put the word out. Okay. Now put it all together. Okay. Here we go. It was a Sunday. Um, the neighbor, a neighbor called and said that they'd seen Kevin go around the back of the house. Um, he'd been living with us on and off for a while at this point, so, you know, we kind of had to put the word out, because um, he'd stolen a bunch of stuff from us, so neighbors kind of knew to call if they noticed him. Um, I just thought he was there for drug money like he always was. <sighs> so Frank wasn't home that day. He'd taken Drew to swim lessons, and... I knew that Siobhan was right around the corner at a friend's house, so instead of going home myself, I I asked her to go check on him for me. Yeah. I was out running errands, and then, uh, and then Siobhan, uh, Siobhan called just hysterical. Just hysterical. She couldn't. Spe- she couldn't even speak. She just would. Um. Yeah. So. I don't even remember how I got home. And then I found him in the attic. He was. Off of a ce- hanging off of a ceiling beam. Um. He'd gotten a tow rope from the garage, and so I. I tried to cut him down, but he was really heavy. He was heavy. Then I just held him until the paramedics came, and, and, and they had to pull him away from me. Okay, you know what? I don't... Just tell me again. He was, you found him hanging, mm-hmm. and you, you let him down, and he was heavy. And they had to what? They had to pull him. How did you feel about that? How did you feel when you were holding on to him? Why did they have to pull him off your arms as opposed to take him away? I wouldn't give him up. You wouldn't give him up. Let me hear that. I... I cut him down. I tried to catch, but he was heavy. He was... He was heavy. (laughs) Then I just held him until the paramedics came. And um, 
and they had to pull him off. They had to pull him away from me. Okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. I'll just tell you something else that is so great about this bunch that we have seen today. We're holding an acting class outside next to a lot of children in the pool. <laughs> and none of you have been distracted or you didn't show us distraction from all the noise and the airplane and the boom and the bim and the bing, which is zeroing in, zeroing in. Nothing else matters except what you're doing, who you're talking to, what you're talking about. And uh, I, I just find that to be uh, incredible. What a, a wonderful class. All right, thank you, Anna. And our last actor is Caroline Keeler. Caroline is schwitzing. Time. Hello, sir. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Okay. Um, I'll be doing a monologue from a play called Matrescence by Jennifer Lane. What's the word for when you're excited and scared? Like, when you want something to happen, but you don't want it to happen. I haven't written in weeks. A writer is someone who writes, and I... I've been trying to talk about this, but every time there's... And I can't. Uh, David and I went to a coffee shop the other day, and um, I wanted to order a decaf iced Americano. And um, I, I couldn't remember the word for ice. So I said, um, cold water. And the barista looked at me like I was insane. And so I was like, um, uh, cold, hard water. And still, just... So finally I was like, uh, uh, frozen water. And he was like, ice? And I was like, yes! Uh, that's uh, not the best example. <laughs> um, I tried to write a poem the other day, um, just something really simple about how the blinds broke the sun into graceful shafts of light, I don't know, something. <laughs> I sat there and I wrote, this is the only room that's mine. Okay, so. <laughs> you're a very smart actress. You know this material really well. I want you to have it in your body, not be like just a little bit above it and performing it. Sure, okay. okay. Okay? I don't feel your block. I've experienced block <laughs> for like months, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it's like is painful. Yeah. Okay? And then, uh, you know what, I, I, I just change the subject, but it comes right, things are f bubbling in your mind, mm, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. What is the word for when you're <laughs> excited and scared? Ask like, the question. What is the word for when you're excited and scared? Is that the way you would ask somebody? What is the word that when you're excited and scared at the same time, mm -hmm. I just can't put my finger on it? Mm. Okay, ask them a question. What is the word for when you're Excited and scared? Like when you, when you want something to happen but you don't want it to happen? A writer is someone who writes. 
I haven't written in weeks. I've been trying to talk about this, and, and, and every time there's, mm, and I, I can't. I don't know what that means. I've been trying to do it mm. for weeks, but there's a mm? What is a mm? I don't know what that mm is. Mm. What is it? It's just a black hole. Okay, fine. <laughs> I need you to see it. You just explained okay. it, okay? Here we go. A writer is someone who writes. Start there. A writer is someone who writes. Is that you? Yes. A writer is someone who writes. I've been trying to talk about this, but, but every time there's... And, and I, I can't. Okay, take out the acting of the black hole. I've been trying to talk about this, but every time I do, I can't. It's killing me. Okay. Go ahead. I'm a writer. A writer is what? A writer is someone who writes. I've been trying to talk about this, but every time there's... And I can't. Oh my God. That is so lovely. That moment now is so lovely. You took out all of that external and you put it inside you and I literally saw your problem. Did you see the problem? Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. Honest. Wow. Okay, we, is that the last person? That so we have person? two minutes and 28 seconds. Does anybody have a question? Anybody, I'm five, six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have a question from what you saw? Go, come right up here and, and talk right into the microphone. No, don't be shy. Get right up behind her. Well, not that close, but yes. Hey, hey. Hi. Uh, so when you're building a, a character, yes. when you're building a comedic character yes. outside of yourself, yes. How do you how do you start? Do you pick a body part? Do you pick in it? What what is what's okay. kind of your story so of creating? I read the whole script. Not easy for me because I'm dyslexic. I listen to what the director says. I read what other people are saying about me in the script. I then look at the time that the play is taking place. I look up what did they wear, um, what did they, what were they doing, how much was milk, and I try to build a world. Then inside that world, I use my imagination. For me, my timing comes and it needs to come out. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't think about it. So I, I build it on instinct. I want to say to you, this is very important, your mind, because you're all very, very smart human beings, your mind knows this much. Your instinct knows everything. You listen to your instinct. There's no right, there's no wrong. Somebody will say, hey, can you try it this way? But until you hear someone say that to you, you try it your way. And we're so worried about, oh my God, I hope I'm who they're looking for. They don't know who they're looking for. They were looking for a tall Italian. They got a short Jew from New York and I went, e for 10 years. <laughs> And that's the, that's the truth. I just made a decision. I, was, I made one choice. Make one choice. That's all you need to do in your audition. Make a choice and you will separate yourself out from everybody else. I made a choice that Pasquale was gonna sit down. I was gonna be the only one standing in the room. Where I got the nerve, I don't know. I just went with it. I threw the script up in the air and I sauntered out of the room. They called me and I had 10 years of a great moment in my life. Hello. You look lovely. Thank you. What is your name? My name is Malian. Hi, Malian. Hi, Henry. And um, howdy. So uh, my question is about material. 
um, because, you know, sometimes I come up with things that are funny, but the things that I come up with, um, the material, I'm talking about material, like I, I have... Are you a writer or now you're talking about it being an actress? I'm writing. You're writing. Yeah, or writing jokes or trying to be funny. Yes. And saying... Uh, there's the operative word. Okay. You're trying to be funny. Right. Are you a funny person? Well, so that's my problem is that I have this... <laughs> I, they're laughing. No, no, no. Um, so, no, I have material that's really nihilism in a way, you know? Like, yes. how do you take nihilism and make it funny? I don't know. That is your problem. Yeah. So, <laughs> that, so now you know what you have to solve because I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> I would be a liar if I tried to give you advice now. The fact is you keep writing what you know is right. Hmm. You keep doing it. Maybe you're not funny. Maybe it's not supposed to be funny. Maybe funny is over here and your stuff is over here. I just, uh, yeah, you're right. And... I just keep pushing it because if we could laugh at nihilism, then we wouldn't be afraid of it anymore. Okay, that is a wonderful um, uh, life uh, journey for you. Okay. I, I, you. And I hope you get there. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm completely out of time. Can I ask one question? Before? Yes, hi. Hi. Um, so we've been watching all these actors go through this process yes. where you're helping them access the emotional yes. core of the scene. I think sometimes people assume that once you've been an established actor for a really long time, that doing what you were just doing with them is easy. I would imagine it isn't, though, right? Is not that something easy. you go through this process yourself with everyone? I go role? through this process. I leave my house. I'm driving to Sony. I have a, an, an enormous scene, three pages. Um, you know, last year on Barry, if you watch Barry on HBO, um, uh, if you watch last year, my love of my life was killed. Her, f I'm not allowed to say this. <laughs> Somebody close to her shows up and starts to talk to me. I have, oh my God, I could go so many different ways. Bill Hader is a wonderful director. Now, there are two kinds of directors. Those who absolutely know and have a vision and you will trust it because you're gonna trust your instinct and then you just say, yes, I can do that. And then it doesn't matter what you're thinking. You're gonna go now and try to go down that path. And because it's in you, because it's in you, it's going to come out. I did uh, a deer once uh, in um, uh, Story Theater. And Carmen de Lavalade, who was the, uh, the star performer, the star ballerina for Alvin Ailey, was my partner. And I said, I can't be a deer. You're a deer. You are a, a prima ballerina. She said, my deer will come out of my body. Your deer will come out of your body. Are there two deer that are exactly alike? I don't think so. Listen to your instinct. Listen to your instinct. I just want to say, I'm so happy that they asked me to come here. This is one of my favorite things to do, even though I haven't done it often. I want to thank everybody for getting up here today. You were incredible. You were uh, courageous. And you are a talented bunch of human beings. And I hope you have the best Thanksgiving, my favorite holiday. I like the sandwich on the next day on Wonder Bread.